Now, I don't usually talk a lot about entry-level budget phones on the channel because they are pretty standard in terms of features for the price that you're paying, but this one here is different. It is the ZT or Zeki, whichever you like to call it, Blade V40 Vita. It is the latest entry-level offering from ZTE. They have been disappearing from Malaysia for a while already and they just recently came back with this phone. And after using it for about three weeks, well, I feel that it is actually worth talking about because there's so many things that I love about the Blade 40 Vita. So here's all you need to know about it. Now, the first thing that got me very impressed here is the 6.75 inch HD plus display that refreshes at 90 Hertz. This is a really nice display despite it being an HD plus display. You definitely do not see pixels when you just look at it casually, not unless you view it up close. Then of course, you will definitely notice some pixels right there, but then it's a really nice display. The touch polling rate is good. The touch response is good. And it's not the kind of laggy entry level phone that you would expect from an entry level phone. Now, in terms of aesthetics, this phone comes with a 6,000 mAh battery right inside, which is supposedly to be a very, very hefty device, but I am very surprised with how well ZTE has designed this phone to be pretty lightweight. I can handle it all day and it doesn't really weigh my pockets despite having that huge battery inside. And you get this really nice holographic design that I actually like it a lot. Sometimes I just simply just like to uh, rub my fingers over it because it has this uh, really nice uh, matte material, textured material that actually feels really Really nice and I think this is going to hide scratches very well even if you don't put on a casing but one thing that ZD could really do better is that they could have included a TPU case inside the box but they didn't do it right now at the bottom here you get a USB-C port that supports up to 22.5 watts fast charging that's really impressive because most entry-level phones only come with 18 watts which is kind of slow and to juice up that 6000 mAh battery you definitely need that kind of charging speed all right and you also get a headphone jack i personally tested this headphone jack on listening to apple music and spotify and i can tell that the sound quality from this headphone jack is actually pretty good and you should definitely consider it if you're thinking to get this as a music player or if you really want a 3.5 mm headphone jack right now the display here like i mentioned this is a 6.75 inch display now you do get this uh dew drop notch over here which looks a little bit dated but i'm actually uh quite impressed that the bezels are actually not as thick as it would be because at least it is slimmer than the galaxy a33 5g that i checked out a couple of months ago this is actually a pretty nice display overall so you definitely Definitely don't feel that it looks dated or whatever definitely doesn't feel like a 599 ringgit phone and i think this is something that budget phone hunters will really like the blade v40 vita comes with a side mounted fingerprint reader that actually works very well in my case and i really love it as compared to an in-screen fingerprint reader instead of a stereo speaker this phone has a mono speaker that actually sounds pretty good it supports dts sound which is the reason why like I mentioned, the headphone output is actually pretty good compared to many other entry-level phones that I've tested. Now, in terms of its operating system here, it runs on Android 11 with ZTE's very own MyOS skin running on top. And the one thing that I am very impressed with is that it doesn't come with any pre-installed bloat. That is something that I wish so many other Chinese brands would stop doing to their skins because it's really annoying when you are infested with ads when you're using the phone and it really makes the phone slow. So despite having this Unisoc T606 chipset that it is running on this phone right here and along with 4GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, the ZTE Blade V40 Vita runs really really well in most apps i really do not feel any choppiness lagginess of course it's not the snappiest device of all but when you switch between apps you can definitely see that the phone keeps up very well and when you scroll through facebook feeds tiktoks it just works really smooth and i do not have any complaints about this entry level device when it comes to performance even when it comes to casual gaming, the Blade V40 Vita works really well. I mean, of course, I did not run Genshin on this device because it is not meant to run that kind of graphics intensive game. I ran Homescapes without any issues. I mean, Homescapes is a really fun game, but it is a little graphics demanding at the same time because some phones do lag when you play games like this. And the Blade V40 Vita actually runs pretty well. 
And you know what? I've been using this as my home skips device for the past three weeks and it worked really well. Now, um, when it comes to its cameras here, it has a triple camera setup, uh, one being the 48 megapixel primary lens uh, supported by a two megapixel macro and a two megapixel depth lens, which the other two lenses, you can pretty much ignore them because they are kind of useless in real life situations. But when it comes to image quality, the primary lens on the Blade V40 Vita is pretty serviceable as an entry level camera. I mean, the colors are not exactly popping like Samsung devices or any other devices with AI cameras. The color looks pretty okay. Uh, it's a bit warm and sometimes a little wash out, but it's not something that you can't use it and upload those pictures to Facebook and get shamed by your friends. It actually looks pretty well. Even for the front facing selfie camera that takes eight megapixel cameras, it actually looks pretty good in my opinion. I mean, the colors of my skin looks pretty natural and it's not over beautified and even the details on my background looks pretty good as well. When it comes to battery life, this is where the Blade V40 Vita really shines and it is probably my favorite feature of everything that is on this phone. This battery is simply impossible to kill in a day no matter how you push it. When I use Waze to route to a 30 minute destination, the battery merely dropped 2%. Guys, this is crazy. A 6,000 mAh battery and with a 30 minute navigation on Waze, battery only dropped 2%. That's really, really crazy, man. I mean, I haven't seen a phone that is so power efficient with this kind of battery size because even with the ROG Phone 6 that runs on a flagship chipset, when I turn on Waze for about 30 minutes, the battery would have easily dropped about 5 to 6%. So if you're thinking of using this phone as your primary uh, GPS navigation device, let's say if you are a e-hailing driver that needs a phone that uh, you want to use it for navigation purposes, this is probably the perfect phone for you because the the screen is not too bad, it's pretty okay, quite visible outdoors, but most importantly, the battery life is very impressive when it comes to GPS navigation. And personally, I have not found any issues with the GPS on this phone. Now, in terms of price, this phone retails at 599 ringgit. It's not the cheapest entry level phone out there, but for this price, you're getting a lot of reliable features and you know, especially the 6,000 mAh battery that charges at 22.5 watts. I think it's pretty worth it if you want to consider this as a budget phone, if you're not someone that uh, wants a lot from your smartphone and just want a phone that works for you, the Blade V40 Vita is something that's worth checking out. All right, so that's a quick review on the ZTE Blade V40 Vita. Let me know what are your thoughts in the comments down below and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos coming right up and I'll see you guys in our next one.